Today we're going to be talking about the Cloister Cocktail, a forgotten classic. It was from the 70s, right? So it's it's kind of a classic. Well, that point. was the Dark Ages. Yes, it was the Dark Ages of Cocktails. And I got to say that for a cocktail that was from the Dark Ages of Cocktails, this is actually a really nice recipe. Yes, it was the Dark Ages of Cocktails, and I gotta say that for a cocktail that that was from the Dark Ages of Cocktails, this is actually a really nice recipe. But we're gonna be doing two versions. We're gonna do the original version, and then we're gonna do like a, a respec version because bartenders have recently found this cocktail and respect it into a, a, a hopefully more respectable kind of kind of deal. So we're gonna do that. Two cocktails in one for you guys today. This is a very low volume cocktail, um, and we're just going to literally use a teaspoon of lemon juice and a teaspoon of yellow chartreuse, two teaspoons of grapefruit juice, and then an ounce and a half of gin. This is like almost nothing. We're gonna have to use a coupette or something even smaller for this cocktail. This is like a little teensy tiny cocktail. It's kind of cute. I think I'm going to, well, okay. Here's the thing. Every time I do stuff like this, I really want to improve on the drink, but I probably should just taste the original if I went through the trouble of actually making the original. Um, so let's give this a taste. I mean, it's super gin forward. You get the botanicals of the chartreuse, but it's so bitter and tart, and the chartreuse isn't in enough volume to cut through the tartness, so it's completely unbalanced. The thing is, is that you can tell that it has potential because it is good. It's like the flavors work. You get the botanicals from the gin, you get the botanicals from the chartreuse. The success of this cocktail is definitely gonna rest on your choice of gin because the botanicals and the chartreuse and the botanicals of the gin need to play well together. And of course, I'm gonna say that you're gonna wanna pick a very citrus forward gin, especially if you're going to be making this daisy version. Now that I got into it, the original version is more of a daisy. So a daisy is a sour style cocktail that only gets its sugar from a liqueur, but it's just not in balance here at all. Now I want to improve it a little bit because there's no garnish called out for it. So I'm going to just take a grapefruit peel and just sort of zest the oil on top a little bit. Bam. Okay. That helps it. It's nice, nice, and oh, the, the, the grapefruit oil on it is really, really nice. But it's out of balance. It has potential. So let's actually look at the respec and see, see how that goes. And we'll just set this right there. All right, now we're gonna dig into the respec, which is credited to a bartender named Christina Rando while she was at Cure in New Orleans. It's a very respectable bar. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do here is a quarter of an ounce of simple syrup, half an ounce of grapefruit juice, quarter ounce of lemon, so half an ounce of yellow chartreuse, an ounce and a half of gin. And then strain it. It's gonna be nearer to the mark in volume. Wow, it's got some really nice texture, this drink. And then we're gonna do a little grapefruit twist as well. Put that there. That's it. Yep, that is nearer to the mark. So this respec is just really sensible respec. Not really adding that much to the cocktail other than just a quarter of an ounce of simple syrup to balance that lemon out and then upping the amount of yellow chartreuse so that you get a lot more of that botanical sweetness. You get a quarter ounce of sugar and then you get the sugar from the chartreuse. The chartreuse is gonna have kind of a high amount of sugar. I'm not gonna say that it is three quarters of an ounce of sugar because there's other things in the chartreuse and it is a liqueur. I will say you know, maybe three eighths of an ounce of sugar in there. So it's really balancing out the tartness. The chartreuse and the grapefruit really make great flavor buddies, I gotta say. And then you get a lot of the botanicals of the gin, which is really nicely playing into that yellow chartreuse. 
I kind of want to expand on what I was saying earlier about the strength of this cocktail being in your gin choice. What's great about this drink is that it's versatile enough in flavor profile that you could actually not just use London Dry Gin. So I said before that I would recommend doing something that's really citrusy in its flavor profile, but that doesn't mean that you can't use something like a, no, a more New World style gin. So for instance, when I was testing this cocktail out a little bit, Earlier, I was using Mulholland Gin, which is a uh, local gin here in Los Angeles. It has a lot of cucumber in its flavor profile. It seems like they're really going after some of the Hendrix market with that gin. It is really very complex gin, but it has a lot of cucumber in its flavor profile, and it makes a really fantastically interesting cloister. So using gins that have interesting botanicals and something that's local to you, as long as you get that nice citrus vibe to kind of blend into this cocktail, you can really play with it and come up with some interesting stuff. We said it was a 70s cocktail. This cocktail was published in 1971. It was created by a bartender named Thomas Mario, and it was published in the Playboy's Host and Bar Book from that year. The name Cloister is actually a tip of the hat to the yellow chartreuse because the yellow chartreuse is made by Carthusian monks in France. And a cloister is a covered walkway in a monastery or a convent. And more specifically, it's actually a covered walkway that's closed on one side and open on the other side. And it opens up to a quadrangle courtyard from what I read. Oh, so. I've, I've stayed in a cloister there. Oh, really? Yeah. Where? In uh, Cusco, in Peru. Oh, okay. I stayed at this... Uh, like a, you stayed at a monastery? Well, it was a... Used to be a monastery, then it turned into like this fancy, fancy, fancy pants hotel. Oh, so it's still a cloister because it used to be a monastery, right? Yeah. I, I just wonder if, because when I was reading about this, I was thinking about this scene in Braveheart. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a nothing scene that nobody would ever reference. It's kind of crazy that I'm referencing now where the son of the king is talking to this, I think it's his lover or something. And, um, you know, some attendants are following him with like a mirror and, you know, fussing over him. And he's like, leave me alone. And he's actually walking in this, you know, like a like a cloister, right? So he's walking in like this, you know, part of the castle that's closed on one side. It's opened up up to a courtyard. But I'm wondering if it can be inside a castle, or would a castle also. have like a monastery or a convent inside it as part of the thing? I don't know. No, but, but a uh, castle would have those same features. It's a square courtyard with walls, and you, you walk around on the side of the walls, right? Right, but that would be considered a cloister. The other thing well, is not that, if like, it's not not if it's just not if it's not a convent or a monastery, right? It needs to be in one of those religious right, buildings. Because then also you also hear the word cloister um, that technically... being referenced like a nun is cloistered. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard that cloistered as if it's a, like almost like a verb? No. Like, and I'm assuming that just means that the nun is inside a monastery. Oh. Because then the strip malls would almost be cloisters then, if, uh, if it can be anything that has a covered walk. That's true, but if, what a, what, I don't know, I guess my point was that like if a, ki like if a medieval kingdom, uh -huh. like if a medieval, ki not kingdom, that's, that's not true. Right. If a medieval castle mm -hmm. had a monastery or a convent as part of it, then that could be a cloister. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think that's a thing. Okay, it, it might not be a thing. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, it's just like more deep thoughts coming from Leandro. I, I really don't know if it's a thing, but I was just thinking about that and I was like, oh, there is that, is that a cloister? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, I don't know. I was hard pressed to sort of, I mean, it's the first thing that hopped in my mind and I was like, oh, there's actually a cloister from popular culture, but it's probably not. You're probably right. What's up guys?